You can see the small tab here on the frog on this number four left hand turnout. Take this drill bit. And this bit clears the hole, but I want to drill down through the cork road bed and down into the foam on top of the bench work. That way when I run my tap through there and later the brass screw, it doesn't have to work through the cork and the foam. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to clean off the paint on the tab. Take a piece of sandpaper. Finish that off. I want to be sure when I put my brass screw down there that make as good a contact as possible. Okay, take my 172 tap. I want to be a little bit careful with this. I don't want to break the tap and I don't want to break the tab. Okay, I feel like I'm through the tab and I'm not cutting any more threads, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the tab out. I have these 172 brass screws. Before I can insert the screw into the frog tab, I need to open up the slot. The slot needs to be wide enough for a solid core 20 gauge wire to fit down inside the slot. That way when I solder the wire, it has a real good connection with the screw head. So what I have to do now is open that slot up. I'm using a fiber cutoff wheel on my Dremel. And I have to look through a magnifying glass because, you know, I can't see. part. I'm pretty much doing it blindly by braille. But now you can see the 172 wire fits down into that slot all the way to the bottom of the slot. All right. Now I can put the wire in or the brass screw in place. I've never used any brand track. I mean, this is my first layout. I did build a small module once, but this is my first layout. And this Atlas track is the only thing I've ever used. But I have to say, this is not a great design. I see no reason they couldn't put the tab out here. So, that's a gripe. It's what we have to work with, so we'll make the best of it. All right, strip the wire. And I'm going to have to make a little bit of a complicated bend here. So I'll just start out with this and put the wire through. Because of the positioning of the screw, 
the slot goes this way, so I'll have to make a bend in the wire that will work with the slot. And what I'll need to do is bend this over. See how that fits. Yeah, I believe that'll work. That'll work well. This is not going to be invisible. It's just what we have to work with. So, what I have to work with. I need to have the frogs powered. I have a couple switchers that are pretty short wheelbase and I'm concerned about those switchers getting through turnouts so I need to have the frogs powered. Using my big old solder gun I throw some heat at it and get it soldered. Alright, get this thing warmed up. And let's get her done. Alright. Let that cool just a moment. And give it the pull test. It's looking good. Take some isopropyl, my old toothbrush here. Clean the flux off. Take this file, just knock the top off so I don't have this big solder dome here. And I'm going to sand my, sand my frog. Do I have any wheels rolling over that? I want them, I want them to make contact. And lastly, I got a straight edge. I have plenty of clearance. Plenty of clearance between the top of the rail and the top of that solder joint. So good to go. Feeling good about that. All right, so I'll finish these up and I'll have feeders on my frogs. Then I'll run those feeders through the tortoise machines and I'll get some track power to these frogs. And here you can see how I've gotten power to the frog. Over here is the 12 gauge DCC local bus and I've tapped into the local bus for the B rail and I've tapped into the local bus for the A rail. And you can see the A rail lead is here, the B rail lead is here. All right, to demonstrate how it's electrically connected Set my multimeter to ohms. Now I'm calling this my normal route since it passes straight through the turnout. And in this instance, the frog will be at the same potential as the B rail. If I set this to the diverging route, The frog will be at the same potential as the A rail. Because as you can see, as the wheels of the locomotive run through the turnout on the diverging route, 
This is now the A rail. Whereas in the normal route, the frog is on the B rail. And so, it's at the same potential as the B rail in the normal configuration. And it's at the same potential as the A rail when it's set to its diverging route. As you can see, the frog is now on the A rail. All right. Well, I guess that's it for this one. Thank you for watching, and I hope you join me on the next one.